here. So um, you guys can see my screen. I got a little PowerPoint going. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, the agenda for today's meeting is uh, that I'm going to give updates on the ecosystem and any follow-up items that we had. Then we're going to get updates from uh, each ecosystem advisory group leader if they have updates in their area, which I know uh, Mitchell's definitely got a few. Um, Ash, if you've got any updates, we can put you in as well. I, I didn't know if you were going to be here and or have updates. Uh, then we'll have the uh, open session where we'll have you know open questions. And then during the closed portion, uh, I've got some things I need to discuss. So I'm going to need a little bit of time there uh, so we can do uh, the, the updates to the MVP program. Um, so I will click. So welcome, thanks everybody for joining. Um, updates that I have since the last meeting is that uh, in regards to the partner program, uh, we continue to grow, like we continue to get submissions going to DNN Connect and having people talk about the partner program at DNN Connect was a, a big win because we're now getting you know, submissions for from uh, you know European and, and people in different locations. So. Uh, even though if you go to the partner directory right now, you may not see uh, a ton of them. There are some new ones. There are a lot of people who they're in the directory. They're just, they're like updating their profiles and uh, I'm just waiting on them to email me and say, Hey, I'm ready to turn it on. So uh, we, we've got a lot of countries represented. So that is, uh, is good. <clears throat> and if, if you are not aware, uh, Mitchell uh, has some leadership in the ag group. Uh, he's got updates around that. He has posted two uh, very informative blogs recently. And DNN Connect was a great event. Uh, Peter, do you want, you posted a blog with your, your post game thoughts. I, I mean, people can check that out. We don't you know, have to get in all the details. I think everybody could see from the picture that it was a, a good event. Um, and then uh, Mitchell referenced this and Peter, you did too in blogs. Uh, there was a good meeting there that happened at DNA Connect uh, in between Andy and Ash and Mitchell uh, and a few others, uh, but basically just getting confirmation on things. Uh, and again, Mitchell is going to update on some, <clears throat> some of that. So the follow-up items from the last meeting, uh, you know, one of the topics that we discussed was like, you know, the MVP program, like what's going on with it, are we inviting new people, what are the criteria? So that's the information that I'm, I'm going to present in the closed session because I want to get feedback from everybody that's uh, here. And uh, upcoming events. So we've got a Southern Pride DNN meeting next Thursday. Uh, Mitch is going to speak and also Daniel Balalas is going to speak. Um, I, I think, you know, general updates about roadmap and, and I think Daniel is going to talk about, um, you know, some of his work on GitHub and just open source. Uh, there is a virtual user conference, so um, I posted this on social, also posted it on Facebook, but uh, in the DNA community, we're not, I guess, conditioned historically to anticipate these virtual user conferences that Andy runs, so I'm trying to promote those more, so I just want to mention that. Um, DNN Summit uh, was announced uh, at DNN Connect, and it's going to be February 19th through 21st, uh, again in Denver, so you should be hearing more about that uh, in the coming weeks and months. And then we also have weekly DNN tag meetings from, two to three, or from three to four on Tuesdays. We had some people asking on Facebook about that, so I just want to let people know about that. You can you know, easily uh, get involved in that meeting. All right, so we will go down the line uh, for ecosystem advisory groups updates. So Mitchell, we will start with you. Do you need to share your screen or do you just want to speak to things or, or what? I'll just speak to things at the moment. Um, I, I, I think it'd be easier. So, you know, really the, the biggest thing so far um, is, you know, for this group that it hasn't maybe been, um, well, most of you have been, but um, you know, for those who haven't necessarily seen some of the news information that's gone out there, um, at Dean and Connect, I was able to sit down with with Ash and Andy and um, and Clint, and we really got a good plan in place in terms of identifying the process and procedure for the community 
um, starting to, you know, uh, adhere to that um, small corp, big community um, mantra that Andy has been saying, um, you know, throughout the time with ESW. So with that, we've put some new processes and procedures in place. We've validated permissions and started to really be able to process and work with community contributions. Um, that's led to identifying roadmaps, setting procedures around releases, um, how we're doing reviews, who's doing reviews, um, and things of that nature have all been um, you know, working on getting addressed. Um, we'll be continuing um, those efforts. There's still some things in place in terms of um, getting the community involved in, uh, for example, the security process for anything that comes in as a security notification um, and a couple other things of, of that nature. Um, but we're definitely um, getting closer and closer to getting all of those processes in place. Um, we've processed a large number of pull requests already in the last two weeks. Um, I don't necessarily see that slowing down much in the coming weeks. Um, you know, there are two blogs that I've posted recently, if you haven't seen them, that I'd really recommend uh, looking at just because there's a lot of information buried in there. Um, and I don't want to take up, uh, you know, the entire meeting trying to give a rundown, especially since many of the folks here um, have already heard it. Um, the biggest thing being, um, we're now responsible for this future direction. So getting, um, you know, getting involved and, uh, you know, if you have that thing that you, you know, really irks you that we need to get fixed, um, you know, get a fix in, get the, you know, get the issue recorded, get the, the fix in, and, and we'll be able to get those things incorporated. And I think, I mean, I can go into more detail, Clint, but I'd almost rather wait until a little bit later for questions otherwise. Okay. Well, so, I mean, as, as far as the, the meeting here, I mean, other than what I need to talk about at the end, uh, I mean, this will be, you know, the, the chunk of the content. So, I mean, we, we've got time uh, if you want to. I'm not saying that you have to, um, but I don't want you to feel like we're, we're rushed for anything. Okay. Yeah. I mean, really it's right now it's, you know, getting involved, right. As MVPs and being able to, you know, review the poll, you know, uh, get your pull requests in, get your bugs in. Um, the only other big technology change is, and this, I guess has been out there since before, but it's official official now. Uh, bug reports have moved from the old JIRA, uh, which was the support dot 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 com into the DNN platform GitHub account. Yeah, I mean a lot, lot of a uh, lot of significant updates, um, especially in the blog that you uh, alluded to. Um, so, Mitch, is there any other things you want to discuss there? Uh, nope, I think I'm good for now. All right, Peter, what do you have from the developer? <sighs> developer side of things. Now that DNA Connect is over and you've got all this new free time, right? Oh, exactly. Uh, just been waiting for that. Um, yeah, no, um, uh, as you know, uh, we have three, three areas of focus, uh, documentation, tooling, and um, awareness, visibility uh, for uh, for developers. Um, so to start with the last one, um, we are now pumping out uh, over 30 um, presentations on YouTube from DNN Connect. So that's over 30 hours of content uh, that is DNN related that will go to YouTube uh, these days. We're at 22 currently, 22 that are up already, uh, I believe. Uh, so a few more to go and, uh, and then we're complete. Then we've done just about every session that was at DNN Connect in um, what I would say is a, you know, as, as, as professional as we can get it format, like uh, proper screen recording devices. So we have a um, high def uh, uh, screen grab from the developers and 
video uh, and audio, especially like the audio is critical, good audio of the speakers. There's just one session, I believe, where the speaker was not wearing his wired mic, but all other sessions should be, uh, should be good. Um, so very excited about that. Very excited to see that happen. Um, I hope uh, that at Dean at Summit, something you know similar can be done uh, to preserve that content for the web. It, it, I think it really helps us. Oh, yeah. So I got a question, Peter. Did y'all yep. do that internally, as in like somebody uh, in your group had that skill set? Right. It was a co it was a combination. Just for the uh, summit people here, so that's you and Joe, I believe, and Mitch. Yeah. Um, so what we did uh, last last year, we experimented with just putting a camera on. Uh, just just a regular camera, but then in film mode on um, on a speaker, and then having a microphone with a separate microphone feed coming off the speaker, and then I had one device, so I put that in the main room, screen recording, screen recording device. So that taught us that the screen recording device was actually good, but the um, the, the audio video part would just fell apart because that was the cameras just don't last that long and et cetera, et cetera. So this year, um, Declan found a professional videographer for who for the sum of um, something like 2,200 uh, was there for two days with one assistant manning three cameras, three professional cameras, wireless mics uh, on those three rooms. Now, given that there's two spread out over three rooms, it means you'll have you know someone walk in, walk out every now and then, and uh, but they did that very discreetly. I never noticed really, uh, but it does mean that if the speaker moves out of the image while one of the assist, while the assistant or the videographer was not there, you might have lost the image of that uh, that person. So, you know, that, those were the small caveats. Uh, but on the whole, you know, you end up with two feeds, like a um, a top quality audio video. Feed that was done professionally, and the um, the screen grab that you know I, I you can get these gizmos on eBay that um, you know presenters will plug into, and the feed then goes on to the overhead projector, but you at least capture everything that goes on the screen. Um, so any questions, feel free to ask us how how that worked out in terms of um, you know the speakers how they. Um, how successful we were because there are a couple of hurdles uh, to take in this and you know we're still learning um, but want to want to definitely want to keep on doing this um, yeah definitely who who did the post-production video stuff? Declan De Declan is doing the um, he, okay. he's got this set up at home to um, to render these videos he did the uh, the, sh the small intro with the uh, boom 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 music kind of uh, like, like it's some kind of an action movie that's coming. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, kudos to him. He, he, he is, um, uh, you know, we, we, I think, you know, we're, we're getting a really nice format out of this. Yeah, and I think we, from, I mean, we would love to do it here in the U.S. I know we'll have to really dig and see if we can find some, some community sources. Because I know when we looked at it last year, the mm -hmm. cost for us, Clint, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the cheapest setup we could get would have been about twenty twenty two thousand. Yeah, I, I think that was considering the, the live stream. Or yeah, I think that was considering live streaming too. So maybe what we need to do is try to figure out just to do it recorded afterwards. You know, I would, I would, be really cool. Exactly. I would, you know, I take those figures as an indication of I think where you should be heading for you're basically asking for the time of two or three, you know, ideally three people if you have three rooms or four people with four rooms, but um, they don't need to be uh, rocket scientists, uh, but you do need for every camera, for every room to rent a relatively pro camera. It doesn't need to be 4K, right? All you need is HD footage of the person who's presenting, um, but as as uh, Declan had said earlier in the process as well, it's like the crucial bit is getting decent audio from the speaker. So if they, if you can get wired mics on those speakers, 
you're golden because that is what runs the presentation. Gotcha. Uh, but I don't, I don't want us to get too far. Up right, right. Okay. So, yeah, no, I mean, details obviously updates. will be. So, another other update is um, documentation. Uh, so, we are working, um, I'm saying we, at, uh, this is Kelly Ford and a team around him working on documentation. So, I want to give you a heads up on what is happening there. Um, uh, we are looking to uh, migrate the existing documentation to a new format and, uh, and, and also, uh, yeah, so let's first talk about that. New format would be Markdown. Why? Because we feel that that is a format that most people in our community are familiar with. Uh, currently, it's in a, it's in a, a format called DIDA. Um, but we don't think we're going to get a lot of people to contribute um, uh, content if they have to uh, write DIDA uh, documentation. So the path we've chosen is to have a repository of documents, markdown documents on GitHub that are um, that will carry metadata within the file um, in the, I think it's called front meta at the top, right? Yep. So you can put various, various um, key value things in there. And um, we will have a generator that basically takes that content, compiles the documentation, and then creates a static site from that. Um, the, right, so given that it's Markdown, given that it's on GitHub, the idea is that makes it for us, the community, a lot more accessible um, and uh, uh, available to everyone to contribute to. Awesome. awesome. I just want to add one thing is that so, so yep. from a DNA Corp, we have kind of given our GitHub repository for the data format uh, to Kelly. Yep. And the um, you know, ag agreement there is that. Uh, once Kelly and his team is ready, they will put it into DNN software GitHub, just like we have the platform source. And then yeah. we're gonna make uh, Kelly Ford and whoever wants to be as is kind of the moderator there and they can recruit other people and give commit rights, uh, just like just like how we're managing the platform. Uh, but, the so, but the source code for the doc will be on the GitHub DNN software. And we're also saying that um, the URL for the final site will also be kind of hinged to the dnnsoftware.com uh, okay. slash docs is the current site. Pro probably we're gonna reuse that uh, yeah. and kind of sunset the current docs, docs site as soon as uh, they're ready. We yeah, don't right. have a timeline, right, Peter? Do we have a timeline? We don't have a timeline because there's still a couple of details to to work out. So, so indeed, as we're you know we're discussing with Ash about final placement uh, of this stuff, and and we're more or less you know happy with uh, the proposals that have come from DNA Corp. Uh, we prefer to go for docs.dnnsoftware.com uh, as as the as the address. Um, but uh, we're, we're just kind of working out like to make sure that we have daily control over what is there, right? That there are no dependencies on, on outside entities to, to make this all work. So uh, that, that is an ongoing process. The, currently, we received the documentation uh, day before yesterday. So you know, we're, we're now going, looking into the migration of that documentation. Uh, the focus is, currently on how we organize the content and then the technology should pretty much follow uh, from that. It's, it's not rocket science to turn Markdown into HTML. Um, but my, you know, my, uh, uh, I think our goal here is to make sure that we get those content files correct and especially that metadata that's going to drive uh, the compilation of the site uh, to get that correct. Because otherwise you have to go through all those files again and, and, and change that. So, I think the other important thing is that we said we're going to host a book documentation there as well. Well, uh, that's the, yeah, I think indeed that's that's a, a, a another point. I mean, um, uh, again, we're in we're in discussion with you guys about you know how how exactly we're going to do that. You know, who updates what and who gets the 
um, who gets the keys to what. Yeah, good stuff. So yeah, there's definitely um, some good things on the way here uh, in the land of documentation. Um, Peter, on the tool side, what's the update on the tool the, side? The, okay, tool side is the one side that is not moving very actively right now. Uh, so one of the, I would say one of the reasons is obviously that we're still on web forms technology and in terms of templates and everything, there's not really a shortage of those for web forms. Um, but uh, if you're thinking about you know, more modern tooling, Node.js based tooling, I think it's interesting and we should do that. Um, the only thing is I don't think it's going to make a huge difference in the amount of developers we attract because you know, we're still a web forms platform. So you're, you're basically creating uh, script kiddies, new tooling for, you know, something that was in COBOL and uh, it, it they're, they're obviously they're, this is where we go hand in hand with the technology group uh, trying to uh, drive forward. I, I think one more thing, Peter, I think we'll be looking from your team is in general is to get a roadmap as well as to what that content roadmap looked like well, once, yeah. you, once you've figured out everything. Yep. Which area are you guys going to focus? Are you going to focus more on the dev side, administration side? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, good stuff. Um, okay, I think so. Will and the awareness group has got some updates here. Will, are you, let's see, I think he's here. Yeah, he's here. I'm just waiting for him to figure it out. Nah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> the internet moves more slowly in the Carolinas. Yeah, we just got the internet. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, as far as like things going on with us, we, um, we 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 we're starting to get a little bit more traction again. Like things kind of died down a little bit. Uh, ironically, our last meeting we had the least number of people we've ever had in a meeting, but we probably had the most productive meeting we might have had in a while, uh, maybe ever. I don't know. Um, so, uh, if anybody's watching the videos after the fact, you know, you can feel free to let me know if you feel the same way, but, um, we, uh, so we have several areas that we're focused on and I'm trying to pull them up right now. So like we got, we're trying to, you know, build a curriculum. We're trying to, uh, you know, get a, get a community dashboard built up, uh, work on site messaging, uh, you know, and increase the number of, uh, an awareness of extensions and, and themes out there. Uh, there's also a speaker program pushing social media more. Uh, what else? Training course, getting more tutorials up. We're doing fantastic in tutorials. Um, and then user group program. So on the dashboard right now, it's uh, in a state where we have source code that has a lot of the stuff that we want to get done already in it um, that we can pull from to build our own actual dashboard and leaderboard and, and point system and you know reward people and measure activity and health. Uh, based upon that. Um, so that, that's still under review. It's been out there for a bit, little bit less than a week in terms of the person who is leading that. Uh, we'll see here. Uh, site messaging is in limbo right now. We're having issues getting everybody on into the same meeting, uh, but we should be able to schedule something. Uh, actually, we're supposed to do this week. So I need to follow up on that. Actually, let me put a note down here. Uh, and site messaging. All right. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, so uh, with social media, um, it's been hard to get people like, you know, it's easy to like go click something and say like and retweet and or whatever, share. Um, <laughs> it's been difficult to get people to do that, though, which is weird. Like it takes a second to click sometimes, right? Um, so I've, I've been taking the lead on that myself, but just by doing a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Kind of leading by example. Um, so I don't know. You might have noticed me push a ton of new content out there this week. Um, so I'm going to continue to try to do that moving forward. Um, so let's see here. Uh, speaker program. Uh, so the speaker program. We're trying to get that all built up, uh, or actually getting the plan done. Uh, so Joe Craig's leading that. Uh, so the last meeting he had some direction, and so we're we're working on that right now. Uh, the area though that we need help with, uh, cause a lot of this other stuff, there wasn't somebody available for the, the, the leader for those items or was not available for, uh, in our last meeting. So I don't have an update on those, but the area that we do need help with is, um, 
uh, building up the user group module again. Uh, and, and when I say building that up again, I mean a new replacement, complete replacement for it. Um, so Poindexter and myself, we had uh, worked together about one or two years ago on putting together a plan. We have wireframes, all that stuff's done. Uh, we just didn't start, we didn't yet start to put code to the, you know, putting code down. Um, so I don't know if anybody in the, like the development group might want to pick up that ball and like run with it and we can kind of PM it with you or something and test it. Uh, I just don't have enough time to actually do the code and, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure David doesn't have the time to do that either. He's pretty stretched pretty thin as it is. Uh, we definitely could use some help, a helping hand with that. Uh, but outside of that, uh, we have a lot of activity that's been going up. And one of the things to bring up with the general group is that um, we, uh, one of the things that, uh, and I was talking about this with the leaders earlier, uh, one of the things that I try to do with every one of our meetings is try to remove an obstacle of people participating, right? Because everybody always has all kinds of different excuses, right? And, you know, it could be time, it could be, you know, you know why should I do that? Or somebody else did it. And like, there's, there's, there's a list of them, right? Um, and, and, and they're all relevant. There, there's, there's nothing wrong with them. But uh, uh, one of the ones I focused on this last time was somebody already did that. Or maybe that other person should do it because they're better at it. So I'll wait for such and such to, you know, create this post about whatever or a video about whatever this thing is. And, and one of the things I, I harped on, on the team about was that does not matter. If we have like whatever the topic, like right, right now uh, there's a little bit of uh, talk about upgrades. Like if, if 10 people gave their own perspectives on their, and they all wrote a blog or they all created a video or both or whatever it is. And they all said, Hey, this is how I do upgrades or these, this is my you know, opinions on upgrades or whatever it is. That is fantastic. You know, you shouldn't you shouldn't choose not to do something just because somebody else did it or there's content out there already or whatever. You know, bring it back up. It's fresh. You know, there's there's new things that have happened. There's there's a new perspective, a new voice, um, and so it's not wrong. And in fact, it's better. Um, so that's one of the things that uh, we we uh, had a lot of activity on. And then um, what we've decided is moving forward, we're we're going to start to uh, do kind of a theme. Right, so uh, this month it is upgrades. Right, so whatever content that we're doing, we try to push at least one thing uh, uh, about that particular topic. Which this this month again is, is upgrades. So anybody in uh, the MVP group, if you want to push it, uh, out some content about like here's how I do upgrades or or whatever, please feel free. Uh, and and that might be as easy as like going finding the upgrade documentation pages. Like hey, you know, if you're, you're going to be up upgrading. Here's some good information for it. You know, whatever it is, we just need activity, and that's that's part of what uh, the awareness group is. And 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 I'll end it on this. Um, uh, the thing that I start every meeting with is is telling people that we're not going to be doing everything, and we can't, right? And so you know, we all have our personal goals, and one of those personal goals is to empower other people to know that they can do these things, and and so that way, you know, everybody's doing these things. And so I'm handing that ball off to you as well. So that's my update. Awesome. Appreciate it, Will. Um, and, you know, Will's, one of the things that has stemmed from Will's group is uh, that Francisco has been translating a lot of blogs into Spanish. And uh, one Mr. EPT, who's also on this meeting, asked at Dina Connect, uh, you know, can they translate blogs? And the answer is yes, I think Will would agree with that. But yeah, little things like that, that they go a long way. Um, all right, so Mr. Poindexter, I know I gave a little bit of update on the partner program. I have a couple of questions, uh, oh, okay. if you don't mind. Hey, well, so are you waiting on anything from DNN Corp? Oh yeah, access to the website. <laughs> okay. Everything. Everything. <laughs> no, like uh, there's, I mean, there, there's some things where uh, uh, we haven't asked uh, for things yet because we're not ready to ask. Uh, but yeah, access to the website is going to be one thing. Uh, I, I know even back in the past, we were starting to do that, and there used to be some sort of staging area that almost got handed to us, and, and I think uh, uh, Ernst, Peter, and myself were kind of leading that, but then it just kind of died, so I don't know if that still exists or how that's going to happen in the future, but that's definitely something that is we're going to have to think through. Yeah, there is a staging site there for sure. So, yeah, I think maybe we can talk separately. I think, Clint, you have admin permissions, right? Uh, I, I think I've got admin uh, permissions on the site. I don't know that I can like install modules. And right, like because you know we have this is a production site, right? And and, and there was a question I had in my mind as to when people are going to be developing. I mean, they have if it goes on DNA software and it should go through the same due diligence as if people yeah. are contributing to the, to the product, right? 
So we're no security on holds, no security holds. Uh, yeah, you know, some, someone should vet it, right? Yeah, we're, we're probably going to have to have kind of a, a different meeting about that because yeah. some of the Go. updates are going to require information architecture changes, uh, maybe themes, even new modules. And so just like you said, you know, we can't just throw anything up there. We need to test it. So, uh, and, and, and to Will's point, that question has, the, the request for access hasn't happened because we're not ready yet. Because if you gave it to us, and that us, meaning the awareness group, it'd be like, okay, well, thanks, but we don't have any changes uh, agreed upon yet. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's good to know. I mean, it's, it's good to know you guys are like blocked because of the Corp. So, I think we had a, at the Connect, we had a great meeting with the yeah. technology group. We kind of unblocked pretty much everything that was on the table. So, I think uh, Andy wants to unblock as fast as uh, he's able to, as soon as, as long as it makes sense. Right. So, and, and Ash, it may make sense uh, to let the people in this group know that there is work going on right now about open sourcing the EVS software. Yes, yes. So there is, uh, yeah, there is work going on in open sourcing EVS. Uh, we identified there were several credentials in there, uh, and that has to be removed. So we are working on it. I'm probably looking at next week. I think I should have more updates there. And it will be part of the DNR software, GitHub, and, and but we're not open sourcing the infrastructure, just the source code. Right. So, yeah. And that, I mean, that was, you know, what people were. That was the plan, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and the last question I have for you, Will, is that, so one thing I spoke with, I think Peter uh, at the Connect was, so in terms of new blood, new developer, I think Andrew is the only one that that is brand new and who is contributing to DNN. I, I mean, everybody who's come back to They've been around DNN, the new DNN. So are we seeing new developers? And oh, Well, we don't really have any way to measure that yet. And, and that's, uh, I don't know if the dashboard will answer that particular question. Um, I mean, it, it's, it will certainly help. Um, but, you know, that's not something we've ever been able to really truly measure. It's usually been anecdotal, like how many people are new to this conference? You know, that kind of stuff. Wow. Um, so I'm not sure if we'll ever be able to, like, uh, intelligently answer that question. Um, but I mean, we got people like Andrew, like you mentioned, um, and every now and then a new face pops up that we've never heard of in, in, in like the, the, the Facebook group, things like that. So, I mean, that's still happening. Um, it's obviously not the yeah, the, the, this, uh, Validas guy uh, showed up, right? The, uh, the guy that has now gone through to do all the, um, the old core modules. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll mention as well, you know, Mike, Mike Smeltzer, I mean, he has been using the yeah. for a while, but never very active in the community. So it has, he has been, you know, very active lately. So uh, it's a, to me, it's a new face. Well. Yeah, I think we should try to give them a shout at the DNN, uh, yeah. the digest or something, right? If, if yeah. they're, they're making an impact, right? Not yeah. Well, that, so Daniel's at our next Southern Pride meeting. And, uh, and another thing is uh, in the DNN digest, in the email version, I wasn't able to get it in because the guy at Crossover didn't make the update in time. But on the web blog version, you see the project updates section where I'm giving shout outs to people uh, who have made updates. And so a lot of that information, uh, Ernst Peter uh, helped me get. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to put more of a focus on you know contributions and community members and things like that. And we should be able to measure it um, better going forward, hopefully. Yeah. So, all right, I will again see if Mr. Poindexter has uh, any updates from the partner side. Yeah, I'll try to keep it relatively quick here because I know you have, want some time there at the end. Yes, but right. um, as Clint mentioned earlier, you know, there's been quite a bit of uh, activity around onboarding people into the partner, the new partner directory on the dnnsoftware.com. So I've seen a few trickle in there and also some great conversations at DNN Connect. I know some people, if they haven't already, are definitely planning on uh, submitting into there. And one thing I've found encouraging, I mean, there's not a lot of activity right now um, going on in the partners EAG, but um, I think it's going to ramp up here again fairly soon. But I will say that um, I've been impressed with once the program launched, you know, the, the whole message from the beginning uh, that Clint, I know you, you harped on quite a bit that, you know, that this is the V1 of it, but let's iterate, let's make it better. Um, that's actually happened in several uh, cases with minor tweaks that have been made to the site, you know, just to make them 
look better, be a better user experience, and, and so forth. And I'll point one out that was recent that just got uh, made the icons that were being used for indicating what level of partner there is uh, were yellow stars. And I think a lot of people think of that as like a rating, you know, of the partner, but uh, the, those got changed to blue trophies, for instance, to try to convey a little bit different message there and not feel like a rating um, to that. So that was a nice change and just kudos to the team at Corp uh, for making those changes quickly and, you know, getting those in place. So I think overall it's been a positive, uh, positive sign. Um, I will say too that there, there was some great dialogue uh, with Andy and some folks at DNN Connect about the DNN marketplace. So I won't mention too much about that right now, but we're, we're definitely starting to re-engage in talks about what to do about the store. So be looking for some information to come out uh, in, in the near future on, on that and what the direction might be. And David, I just wanted to ask the same question. You're not waiting on DNN Corp to on the store, right? I think the idea is that you, you will propose, like your team will propose, and I guess Andy will simply bless it. Yeah, I think that's the idea. I mean, we had some really good, it was kind of a side conversation when Andy, and I, I don't think you had stepped out there, Ash, so oh. um, we'll have to bring you up to speed a little bit on it, but great conversation around that and, and how we could move forward with that. I think we were kind of in a holding pattern for a while, uh, but right now I think that's, that's shifting. So it's just a matter of us really articulating the plan, sending it out, you know, get, getting some nice blessing on that to move forward and, and go, go forward. And yeah, I guess the only question that will be on Andy is the final rate, the commission or the, you know, the 30% that it is there. What, what would the new value be? And I think he said once we have the full plan, I think that question will answer at that time. Right. I think that's the understanding. Uh, the only uh, other, right. That's your understanding too, David, about the, the 30%. Uh, well, currently it's 25%, 25 and there, and there's been talk about that being reduced drastically um, to the point of really trying to reach a break even point for lack of a better term there uh, to where, you know, it's not a cost center anymore. Um, it's just, uh, but definitely had to cover operational costs of, of the store. So I, I think that's the game plan. Right. Because we do have someone manning the store right now. Outside right. The thing, so. right. And, I, and, and I don't think that'll really change uh, with what we're kind of thinking here. So it's just a matter of, you know, exactly how that happens and what the cost of that is and really trying to get as close to that break even point as can, you know, without losing anything. Yeah. And one last question, guys. With the new partnership program, are people seeing referrals? Kind of like, are they seeing new business? I mean, at the end of the day, it has to mean business. So. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question because, I mean, I know I can attest to it, and I was a little bit skeptical myself, you know, just privately myself, about putting our company out there, and, and, and we did. And we've actually gotten contacted a couple of times where we were able to you know, ask the, the customer, where, how did you hear about us? And we, we actually thought they were coming – from different mediums, but they're like, no, we, we searched the, uh, the DNN software partner directory and found you guys thought might be a good match. So I know I can attest to that. I'm, I, I can only assume that that's happening with other partners as well. Awesome. I think Ernst Peter made an awesome comment there at the, I think it was a Q and A about inviting as many people. I think that is key because the more people you have, the more enriched uh, the, the thing look. Uh, just wow. few dozen yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we really need more. So if anybody's in this meeting that has not put their companies in there, please be encouraged to do so. Um, it's, it's nice visibility and it's very well laid out. Um, I, I think it can provide some benefits to you. Gotcha. Good stuff. Well, I, I am going to try to move on here a little bit quickly because we're getting low on time and I do have some more info. Um, so the next will be just open session for Q&A. And if, if we keep this maybe to five minutes, if people have questions, uh, that would be great. So, um, so that I can show you all my updates. But anybody got any questions, anybody that's on here and hasn't been talking? Don't everybody speak at once. Type it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Smooth. 
All right. Well, so that that's fine if nobody has questions because I have uh, some questions here myself. So, um, all right. Well, so I'm going to close down the open session, which will end the uh, recorded portion of the uh, meeting. So thanks everybody for tuning in, especially if you have watched this online. So we'll see you at the next one.